recording here to show you that. So what we wanted to show you was and explain the reason was our migration to what we call the Android connector. As many of you know that you've been with us for years, um, we support multiple warehouse management systems. We support, um, if you go to our website, we support not only um, Stone Edge, which we've supported, that's our longest and most robust integration. We started supporting Mom, Mom 10, Freestyle Mom, and we do Mom 10 and Mom 11. We also do um, some channel advisor users from, from way back and a couple of NetSuite users that, that got too big for Stone Edge, so they moved over to NetSuite. And they're all using an application which was written years ago that was designed to run on on the um, the Windows CE and Windows Mobile devices. And this was probably the best, this is the best that you could do back then. Um, this is a, a screen that I have up, you, you've seen that. Most of you are familiar with that, that have used our product, the login, login screen. And unfortunately what happened is the industry, all of the people that, that were manufacturing hardware, because Microsoft deprecated Windows CE and Windows Mobile, this these are going away. The the scanners that they they've gone away. Actually, they don't they don't make any um, any more of these. And so the only thing we can get is reconditioned ones. And so we just decided uh, we're going to move away from these and move into the to new new Android. So for the last couple of years, we've invested quite a lot of money on our for our budget uh, in creating a migration path to the Android scanners. And so we've, we've done that and we've got several customers that are using it. We have several customers that are using it exclusively over the old Wavelink Studio. So the old Wavelink Studio, you had um, this interface, you had, we had a, uh, um, Wavelink Studio would run in the background and there was a server and and as people logged into it, you know, you could launch the server and you could see who was logged in. Right now I've got one scanner connected. Um, so there were some menuing systems that this allowed, but basically you ran on the device um, this Wavelink Studio. And this is an emulator that we had that allowed us to look and see, you know, this is what what this, this screen showing right now to, for login and many of you are aware of those. So several years ago, we started creating a migration path to Android. And so we've, we finally got it up and running and, and debugged and it's, it's pretty solid. So we've released it to several of our customers and they're, like you say, they're using it. And now we have a lot of other options that are available. They actually, they actually make this MC32N0 an Android. Uh, this has a physical keyboard. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, the screen's actually the same size, but our rendering uh, of the uh, our rendering of the screen is just a little bit bigger, big, bigger because we don't have the menu at the top and the menu at the bottom. So that's an option for migrating if if you want to do that. Unfortunately, you can't upgrade them. Um, so you have to get MC32 and zeros, but there's a lot of others available. This is called a TC52, um, and and you notice that they're keyboardless. They don't they don't have a keyboard on them. So this is this is the MC330K, and it has a physical keyboard, and it has an emulator. Uh, you, we, I can actually share this on the screen um, with this cord that I've got. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call this up. And it'll pop up here, so that you can actually see what's what's on during, rendering on the screen here. So let me exit this, and I'll go back to the to the main screen. So what we do, there's three parts three parts to our migration to Android, and and these don't exclude anything on Wavelink. You can still run these side by side. So on the RF server, there's a a thing we call the Android connector that runs and that interfaces with um, 
the scanners. So that runs and we typically minimize that. So that's running. And then we have this, this uh, utility called the Android connector window, which gives us a port, a view into what's going on and what scanners are connected, et cetera, just kind of like the studio one did. You can see the licenses available. You can see this is for Stone Edge. Right now, there's one there's one uh, scanner logged in, and it's in lookup. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, you see that this one's launched now, and I'm in the program. Says I'm in the program men menu. So if I go into into lookup, it now switches to say lookup, and so you can see that the screen on this one is is much bigger than the screen on this one. But if you move to a device something like this, the screen is even bigger. So um, let me bring this one up real quick. So here's the screen on this one compared to the screen on this one. This one doesn't have a physical keyboard, but that's okay because now what we do is we have a pop-up keyboard that you can you can bring up and I'll, I'll demonstrate it on this one. So here I am at the login um, and it's asking for me to scan the UPC what what uh i do is if i tap the screen it brings up a it brings up a keyboard a virtual keyboard and i can i can tap in here um the upc or i can type xxx and exit so wherever you had you typed 999 we've now done a shortcut that you can type xxx and whatever you type 77 it's ss and wherever you type uh 99 it it uh it has a shortcut for all of those but so you can do the, the pop-up window, but also if you long tap on the top of it right here, you get a menu. And when you tap on the Wavelink, it's, I'm sorry, the wireless terminal, it shows you the version number and exactly when it was compiled. So you can tell if you have the newest version or not. And then there's some other things here that I want, that we're exciting to show you about. I'm going to long tap on it. And if you go into settings, I can turn on enable speech. So I can turn on enable speech. And I can turn on pop-up windows, pop-up images. I can actually change the connector timeout. We put that in there for uh, a different client. And you can lengthen how long you want the image to pop up right here just by doing these settings. And then when I'm done, you just hit back. And now it's enabled on this particular device. Um, I'm going to exit this. And I'm going to go into um, pick. This is Stone Edge Pick, and this is the standard Stone Edge Pick that you've used for years. I'm going to scan my my barcode, and it it brings up, and now I'm going to scan a reference number and order number. This happens to be one that Scrapbook.com, and they're part of the session here today. They provided this to us. Uh, this is from. 2008. So they provided this many years ago for us. I'm going to scan the reference number. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it, it was it actually talked the the location. So if I want to if I want to do that again, I can go back and I get back into it. So it spoke the location, and with Stone Edge, because there's multiple location, it, it defaults to, to the location that you've chosen. And in this case, it's, it's this one here. So I scan that location, and when I find that location, I walk to that location, as you know, and I scan it. What it does is it pops up an image of that, that item and I can, as I showed you before, I can do the settings and I can lengthen the image how long that pops up. Now, your qu the question is, okay, the speaking is, is a, we have to embed that in the actual code of the, of the software. So we, we put in there and we said, we want to speak the location, but the speak, speaking the location will be um, optional depending on what scanner that you're using. Um, so that, <clears throat> Excuse me. I've had a bit of a sore throat. <clears> throat> so that's embedded in the software and it can't be changed 
on your end. <clears throat> but the image that that pops up is stored in the database. So if you go, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go and if you launch SQL Manager, If you launch SQL Manager and you go into the database, we've created a, a table called RF uh, SKU Images right here. So RF SKU Images, you go into that database, to that table in the database, and I hit the wrong button. I'm going to select the top 100 rows. 1,000 rows, and all I have in there is is these four SKUs that that happen to be on this reference number that I'm I'm displaying, and so you put the SKU in there, and then you put the full image, the full path of where the image is, and I'm <clears throat> with the permission of McCain Davis, who's one of the owners of Scrapbook, I got his permission to display these these images in this during this demo. So. I'm going to scrapbook.com website and I'm pulling the image for this actual SKU and displaying it on the screen. So that's how you that's how you embed that. And by the way, whether you're a mom user or a, a Stone Edge user, this is the same. This is the same way. We've implemented the same thing in in um, in mom. And so you go in there, you add that, and then if it's there and you turn that on and the duration there, it'll pop that image up. And and for a the length of time that you specify. <clears throat> so I'll just proceed with the rest of the, this demo on this particular order. And it's asking me for scan the SKU. So I'm going to scan the SKU. This one, I'm going to turn the volume up. So I, I long tap on this and go into settings and I can do volume. And now what I can do is I can do zebra volume control. And this changes. Um, this changes based on the the version of the software you have. So I've got those all the way up. I wonder why it's so quiet. Anyway, so on your device you can you can turn the volume up and down. So let me scan that again. I scan that location and now it'll pop up an image of what is actually supposed to be picked. And Brian can probably tell me if that's the right one or not, but I, I just pulled one that looked like that. I hope you can you guys can hear that, right? You can hear the hear the sound on that. I'm holding it pretty close to the microphone. The idea would be that you get a USB Bluetooth device and you pair it with the scanner itself. And I've done this successfully here and we, we gave one to scrapbook.com to test. But if you get a USB earphone and you, you Bluetooth it with this actual device and put it in your ear, then it will speak into the picker's ear and they can hear the location so they don't have to keep looking down at the screen as they go through the picking process. So that was the that was the idea. Oh, it wants me to scan the location. I'm not There's the Brads. And uh Okay, so I'm finished with that with that particular reference number, and I can move on with the next one. So, so that's that's the highlights of of the speaking the location and and popping up the image. If you're 
if you're working, uh, if you're using our Android connector. Um, the, the Android connector, like I said, can run parallel to the, to the studio ones that you, that you have running now, uh, or it can run exclusively by itself. The part of the problem that we have is if you're in a hybrid environment where you're using the old scanners with the new scanners, we have to dumb down the software to with with the older scanners as well. So now we do we check to see which terminal it's on, and the and the speaking is not available obviously on the Windows CE devices, but it does come out on the Android devices. So so that's basically what I what I what I wanted to show you there. There's how, okay. So the next question would be how do I get this or how does we implement this? Well. I have to remote in to your RF server and do what we call a Android connector install. There's a there's a set price for that right now. It's three hundred three hundred dollars uh, one time to install that on your on your RF server, and then um, the you have to get the Android devices. Um, you can buy them directly from us, or you can go out on your on your own and and buy them. If you buy them on your own from somewhere else, then obviously we can't support them. You're on your own for upgrading and that kind of stuff. Um, once you're, you're once you're a customer, we'll give you the directions on how you can download. So so there's three pieces that I mentioned: the APK, which actually runs on here. And let me get out of this to show you. For those of you that aren't familiar with Android, uh, this this little app that's running here on this on the screen we we had a programmer write that for us and it's called the an APK that APK has to be loaded on the device <clears throat> and and um, for those of you that are Android customers for us you can email me and I'll give you the directions on how to download that directly off of our website I'll give you the URL how to download that and instructions on how to install directly on the device so that's new as of today um, you can download it directly from our website and do an install. You have to delete the old instance of the APK first. And then once you've deleted that, you downloaded it. Uh, you have to change a couple settings so it, it will allow you to download a, an unsecure or an unknown APK, which in this case, you're you're pretty sure it's it's going to be okay because it's, it's our APK. But you downloaded it, and then once you download it, you can install it, and it will install it, and then you... It will show up in what we call the app menu here, right here. It's it's this one right here. And then you simply drag it to the desktop. And I got rid of I got rid of all the other icons on the desktop because I didn't want it to be uh cluttered with all these other ones, but you might you might have one on there that you might want the 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 web browser still there because you have applications that run on a web browser. So it's up to you what you want on there, but I wanted it simplified by by doing that. So when I do the one-time install, I install this this uh, Android connector, which runs in the background, and then I, I I put it in. That's not it. Then I put it in the startup folder so that when you start up your RF server, it automatically starts. This is true with the Windows 10. Uh, Pro 64 bit, it will start up as you start up the RF server. But if you're using Windows Server, any version of Windows Server 2015, 2017, 2019, whichever one you're using, because it's an app that runs in the foreground, it won't run when you, um, it, it won't run at the time that you, you, your RF server boots back up again. Somebody has to log in and then it will, and then they will run. And we found a way around that. I know that that uh, scrapbook.com has found a way to to run it as a service instead of running on the desktop. Um, and I'm sure many of you are, have technical teams that know how to do that. But we found an application called Always Up, and you can buy it for fifty dollars, uh, fifty dollars one time, and it installs on the on the server. Once it installs on the server. Then you can tell it to launch the Android connector and the Android connector window, the AC window, and it will then launch those whether someone logs in or not when the Windows server uh, boots up. 
And then it has a little screen icon at the top that you can click on, and you can actually see the Android connector and the Android connector window and interact with it. So you have the ability to do that if that's what you choose to do and you're running Windows Server as the operating system on the RF server. Let me give a caveat. If you're running a, a VM, a virtual machine, there are some uh, quirks depending on which, which VM that you're running. We have had some issues with Hyper-V, which is a free version of Microsoft offers uh, with not running uh, exactly as we planned it to. Uh, but there's also VMware, which is out there and very, very good. So depending on which virtual machine you have running on your RF server, you may have to do some tweaks and, and things like that, that that we're not aware of, and you'll have to refer that to your technical team. All right, so I can, uh, the other thing is the configuration of these old Windows CE devices. And if you ever change IPs of the RF server, or if you ever change your your Wi-Fi encryption method, it was very, very, very difficult to, to, to make any changes to that. Um, with with Android, it's it's very simple. With Android, you just go into settings and and then um, under under Wi-Fi network connections under Wi-Fi, you just it will see all the uh, the ESS IDs of the, of the networks out there, the wireless networks, and you can choose cl uh, click on it, and then you just enter the the encryption key or the password. And then you're connected. It's that easy. And then from then on, when you launch this this scanner, it will connect to that that Wi-Fi. So that's that's very very easy. Uh, the other issue that we've had in the past is they've RF servers have crashed, and we've had to do emergency builds remotely for them. Or you've migrated an RF server, and the IP address has changed. So if you go into uh, if you go into here, it will automatically when, when these come from us, when the APK is downloaded, it goes to the, the IP address of our RF server, which is 192.168.1.70. You can change that. Yours will come up. But in order to do that, I have to, I have to take down the Android connector so it won't connect to here. So I'm going to take down the Android connector. And now what happens is this, this <coughs> isn't running. If I, if I, um, if I now pull up, you can go to our website at barcoders.com, make server IP, make server barcode, I think it is, uh, and it will bring up a utility where you can actually print your own barcode. And now if I scan this, what it does is now it will change, and now I'm connecting to my mom, to my mom server over here. So right down next to me is the mom application, and so you see that very quickly I can I can switch back and forth and now it will remember that IP address and next time I launch it, it will come up and run. And so configuring the, the Android scanner is so much more easier than, than the old Windows CE devices were and even Windows Mobile, switching back and forth between wireless uh, networks, bringing up a wireless network that's it has higher encryption or whatever you want to do is much, much easier because it's all run under the Android standard applications that are there. And then changing RF server IP addresses, which was a nightmare with the old Windows CE devices, um, <clears throat> you simply just scan a barcode. So we are phasing out our support. Matter of fact, we don't sell the Windows CE scanners anymore um, and we don't sell licenses for them anymore. So going forward, the pricing is that if you want, if you currently have Windows Studio running, <clears throat> then what we do is we can we can translate one Studio license to an Android license, and it will cost you five dollars more than you're currently paying. And the reason for that is we've invested you know close to two hundred grand in in creating this Android connector, and we just can't give it away for free. So we have to have at least a little bit of revenue coming in to offset the money that we've spent. So for example, if you go into um, this Waveling admin, and I go into utilities authorization, it will tell me here that I have six licenses. I have six licenses, so I could add 
when you install the Android connector, we give you the first Android license for free. It, it comes with the Android connector. Um, each additional license, if you have Studio existing there, if you've been a longtime customer and already have a Studio license, we'll take one of these Studio licenses away. This will go down to five, and we'll add an Android license, and that will cost you $5 a month more. Once you, once you reach zero and you start adding Android um, licenses, then you're going to pay the normal license fee, which is uh, $40 per month per license. If you want to keep your studio and you want to run Android side by side, which some of our customers have done, and then you can do it by just paying the installation fee for the Android connector and buying one gun and you get the license for free and then you can test them side by side. Then as you're sure you want to move forward, what you can do is you can phase out your, your studio ones or you can just tell us and we'll add more uh, Android licenses. And so if you have six, six studio licenses running and you want to go to 10, then you tell us, hey, I want you, your first one's free. The next three or I want three more. We'll just bump you. And, and that's the other thing with with studio. These these came from a company called Wavelink. And so we had to pay a licensing fee to them to, to get it and to sell it to you. And to change the licenses, we actually had to remote into your RF server and add or subtract with that utility that I just showed you. We had to add or subtract licenses to that right here. Um, that's not necessary with the, with the Android connector. The Android connector is managed from a cloud server that we have up on, up on the web. And so you just tell us that you want additional Android uh, licenses and we can immediately go in and bump your licenses and then you can you'll you'll have additional licenses as um so if i if i i've launched the android connector that's now connecting to um now connecting to mom but the android winner window now says i think i've got them i got two of these running Anyway, so it will show you your licenses. So if I hit enter here, I, I've connected and the Android uh, window, I think the other one is running in background, but the Android window will show you the licenses and how many and who's connected, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I think that kind of sums it up. Uh, we're done here in a little little over a half hour which is around what, what i had anticipated if anybody has any questions i think there's a chat button on your on your screen where you can you can tap it and you can type in a, a question i'll be happy to answer it now for you if you have any anybody have have a question well that's that's good So Brian sent one and it came real quick. Where's the chat window right here? Okay. Um, Brian said, is there any, I, I just saw the, the first part of that. Any plans to allow the APK to update itself rather than having an uninstall, reinstall anytime there's an update? No, we can't because what happens is the um, we can't do that because what what happens is the APK and the software versions the the Android the Android connector and the Android connector window and the software version that you're running they all have to be in sync. So, for example, if you're running an old version of the APK um, and you update to where you want to start doing pictures and sound, the old APK won't support that. Um, unfortunately, we, we don't have the programming power. We probably, if we had you know a bank of 20 programmers, we could probably um, figure that one out. But unfortunately, I'm the only one left. My son, who used to be the programmer and, and did the majority of the work on this, he got an offer from uh, Amazon Logistics last year and he left. So all the programming falls on me. So um, I have an outside programmer that I hire. He he works for us every week to to do some programming, 
and I have to pay him by the hour. But to, to have it automatically look and see if the versions are okay, and I best we could probably do that if we got a good programmer. But but right now, it's probably low on our list of things that we want to accomplish. And and to be honest with you, we just don't have the resources to do that. Is there a change log for the APK so that we can check what new features, bugs, features have been implemented? Um, we don't have that yet. Uh, again, that Andrew used to maintain change logs. Uh, but we do have we have five uh, order management systems that we maintain, and they're changing weekly. And I just don't have the time to maintain a log of what was changed on each one of them uh, at this point. Uh, right now, I'm putting in a spreadsheet, and if we can figure out a way to easily upload that so you can view it, we can do that. Um, <clears throat> any plans to customize the voice of the APK uh, speed of the voice or other accent voices? Uh, not at this time. We feel like it's a pretty uh, a pretty advanced uh, step that we've taken here, and we just want that to percolate and kind of sit out there, um, and and let let people get input from that. Um, but those are good suggestions that if we had unlimited resources, programming resources, and everything, uh, we we would be able to to do something like that. But unfortunately, with our given resources and and other things, uh, just don't have have the the time right now but brian thank you for those questions sorry to not probably answer them the way you wanted to hear but scrapbooks one been one of the companies that has always uh pushed the envelope and asked us to do bigger and better things and we're we're grateful for that they're they were our first customer and our biggest customer and so we we like to respond to what their wishes are um but sometimes uh we can't we can't walk as fast as they want us to run so i appreciate it any other any other questions or any uh, hit the chat button and send them here. If not, we'll we'll sign off here pretty quick. All right. So if you have a question that that uh, you want to take offline, email me about it. If you saw something here that you want further clarification on, go ahead and email me on it. Um, but basically, I think I covered everything that I needed to cover, and uh, there's no further questions. So we'll we'll terminate it and um talk to you over the uh email thank you